Hello, welcome back, all of my high yield learners. I am back with more USMLE prep content to help you get those high scores that you want and that you're going to get. But first today, I want to start off by announcing this really exciting uh, opportunity for um, for really anyone studying for step one exam. I've partnered with this uh, new company. It's called Unacademy to deliver a free lecture covering GI pathology. We're going anatomically through the GI system. It's going to be, you know, the most challenging and high yield topics, um, as as I always do, as you know that I do. Um, and yeah, so this is going to be a free lecture. I'm going to drop the link in the description. It's happening tomorrow, tomorrow, one day only, May 19th at 10 a.m. Eastern time. That's 7.30 p.m. if you are in India. And if you're somewhere else, you're going to have to figure out what time that is. But you should be there. It's going to be great. We're going to have a good time. Again, this is free, high-yield content, one-hour lecture. And I hope to see you there. Okay, so without uh, any further ado, let's get right into the lesson. Epinephrine. Okay. Great. Okay, so steroid hormone pathway. Uh, another one of the most feared pathways. Um, this one's not so bad. This one's not so bad. And so what I want you to see, big picture here, is that um, the starting block for everything that's released by the adrenal cortex is cortisol. Whether you're coming from the glomerulosa, fasciculata, reticularis, it all comes from cholesterol. Okay, so then we know it's all from cholesterol. So I want to put a line here and say, okay, so this is going to be my glomerulosa. This is going to be my fasciculata. And this is going to be my reticularis. Okay, so we have all the layers of the cortex here. What I want you to notice is that all of the layers have the same enzymes inside of them for the most part, right? So as we're moving down this pathway, we see that we have three beta hydroxylase, 21 hydroxylase, 11 beta hydroxylase. If we move from the glomerulosa, to the fasciculata, notice the same enzymes are here. 3 beta hydroxylase, 20 hydroxylase, 11 beta. As we move into the reticularis, uh, it changes a little bit, but uh, we still have that 3 beta. So the major change as we go through the layers of the adrenal cortex is not on the uh, is not on this sort of vertical pathway, it's on this horizontal pathway. The 17 alpha hydroxylase allowing pregnenolone to turn into 17-hydroxypregnenolone. This is the major difference, okay? And so when we talk about issues, um, you know, in terms of, you know, developmental issues when you're missing these enzymes, these are the primary places where you can start to have issues, okay? Because if you're missing these enzymes, all these other enzymes are present, so we're going to have increases in um, aldosterone or cortisol depending on which uh, enzyme is missing, Okay? So let's let's look at some examples of that. So this is a really nice diagram from your first aid book. Same thing that we just looked at. We have cholesterol going to pregnenolone, going to progesterone, 11 deoxycorticosterone, corticosterone, and aldosterone. Okay. Now, in between the layers, we have this 17 alpha hydroxylase that allows this transition over. Okay. Now, let's say, for example, that we lose this 17 alpha hydroxylase this gets knocked out where is our cholesterol going to go is it going to go to the reticularis is it going to go to the fasciculata or is it going to go to the glomerulosa glomerulosa great so we would expect all of the cortisol which is supposed to be spread between these three layers to go all to turn to aldosterone so we expect elevated aldosterone reduced cortisol, reduced, you know, estrogens and DHT, right? Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Okay, so let's let's make it a little bit more complicated, shall we? That was That's a little too easy. We know that 17-hydroxylase deficiency leads to elevated aldosterone, decreased cortisol. Now, let's make this a little bit uh, more complicated. Let's say instead of losing one of these horizontal enzymes, the 17-hydroxylase, we still have that one, but then we lose our 21-alpha-hydroxylase. Okay, this is gone. 
Where is our cortisol or our cholesterol, excuse me, going to go? Is it going to be converted into aldosterone? Is it going to be converted into cortisol or uh, converted to androgens? Androgens, right? So all of this cholesterol is going to be shunted straight over here. Okay, so we expect to see elevated um, androgens, reduced aldosterone, reduced cortisol. And when I say reduced aldosterone, what does that look like for a patient if they have reduced aldosterone? Excellent, hypokalemia. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, great. So let's move on one more. Let's move on one more. Let's say that we lose our 11 beta hydroxylase. We knock this out. Okay. Now, I know what you're thinking already. Well, this is sort of the same as the previous one. We're going to have most of our cholesterol going here. But the big difference is we have some of it is still able to be converted to this hormone. Right? In the last one, uh, we had everything shunted over into the reticularis, but some can be converted from progesterone to 11 deoxycorticosterone. It just kind of gets stuck there. And, it, you know, for some for some, um, you know, products, that would be fine. Maybe it wouldn't do anything. But 11 deoxycorticosterone has a little bit of activity like aldosterone. Okay. And so with an 11 beta hydroxylase deficiency, we do see elevated androgens. We do see reduced cortisol. But there would, would not be the hypokalemia that we saw with our 21 hydroxylase deficiency. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Let's move forward here. So let's talk about some of the effects of cortisol. When I ask you, like, what does cortisol do? What are you thinking? <laughs> 